everybody, welcome to a wig chat here. So today we're gonna to be doing a wig chat on a brand that I have never tried before. And Sister Wigs, I think it was Sister Wigs, was having a wonderful sale on the Tress Allure line. I hope I'm pronouncing that correct. So I thought this would be a great time, a great opportunity for me to try a Tress Allure wig style. So here's the box. I have to show you the box because this is actually a really cool, I don't know, I'm just, I, I like uh, this one. It's really bright and cheery. So, um, Apparently, the Tress Allure is designed by Noriko Suzuki. I didn't know that. I don't know a lot of things. <laughs> so I'm learning, learning, learning. So yes, I am going to show you this cute little number. I um, briefly stuck it on my head, like, really super, super fast. I didn't even, like, do anything to it whatsoever. Um, so this is going to be just one of those... You know, I'm going to look at it with you guys. I did put it on and just kind of, I didn't even really mess with the part or anything, but I thought, okay, I think I can, I'm going to keep this one. So, okay, so this is the name of this girl. I'm going to have to put my glasses on, though, to tell you what the color is. This one is called Clarissa, and the color, oh, there is no number to the color. The color is Chiffon Candy. So here's the card to this gal. And it is so nerve wracking. I just answered a comment that somebody had posted on, I believe, the Sheer Elegance one. Um, and it's just, it is, it's very nerve wracking when you order that first color in a new line because um, you just, it's kind of a crapshoot, you know, and that's, you know, you jump on YouTube, you look at what you can, what's out there in that color, and you you kind of try to get an idea, but everybody's monitor is different. Everybody's film settings are different. So it is really difficult. I mean, even with me, I try to make it very, very realistic. And if it doesn't look realistic, um, it, when I am, you know, first upload it in the, just the regular lighting, then I try to make the color uh, just adjust either the warmth or the coolness so I can get as realistic and true to color as I possibly can. So anyway, nonetheless, it is really hard. And the little color rings, I don't think, are all that helpful because for the most part, they give you a tiny little swatch of hair. And it is very difficult to get that big picture when it's, you know, on the wig, in the wig. So it is a crapshoot. I do, I think I like this color though. So let me show you guys uh, this one. Now, um, I have just, just decided that I'm going to try the non-lace fronts and see if I can make those work and I don't know. Um, it is definitely a huge thing. I just, I don't know. I love my lace fronts. I love my lace fronts. And um, so this one is not a lace front, you guys. But what it does have is this gorgeous double monofilament top. So this is going to give you an amazing realistic part and it's all through here so you can part it anywhere you want it. The other thing that I think is really pretty cool is that it has this kind of, um, I don't know what you would call this. It's almost a silicone-y feel so it um, will kind of give you better grip and I think it probably also feels very comfortable. So this would be great if you have absolutely no bio hair at all. I would think this would really kind of help keep that there so it doesn't slip around. Plus it, it does feel kind of nice. Um, this does not have any moleskin ear tabs, but it does have um, the stay, you know, the stays in there so you can make sure that they're really flat against your head. It does, however, have an extended nape of sorts. It's not a moleskin lined um, nape, but it's thicker than some other ones that I've seen. And it has kind of the bra strap style um, adjusters here on the side. 
Now the rest of the cap is machine, you know, wefted and, um, you know, decent, um, decent stretch. However, it's not as stretchy as any of the other wigs that I have, so it doesn't have the, the same amount of stretch that I'm used to. Um, so when I first put it on and I didn't even have it on that long, um, I felt like it felt more like my petite size that I have of my Aaliyah than any of, of, than any of the average size caps. So that kind of tells me that it could be this kind of runs a little bit small. But anyway, okay, I am going to try her on and then I will tell you what I will be doing to her, I am sure, to get her to look more realistic because one thing I noticed right away, lots of shine on this one. Lots of shine and really kind of box hair. I can tell the hair's not um, warmed up, you know? It's like, it's kind of, you can tell it's been in the box for a while. So I'm gonna put her on and I will return. Okay, so this is her right out of the box. Put her on my head, adjusted my ear tabs. These ear tabs fit very firm and nice and tight against the side of the face, but in a good way, not in an annoying way. Okay, so this wig is very straight, very um, soft, kind of, you know, that unrealistic kind of soft. Again, this is not a heat-friendly wig, you guys. Um, and it's... Uh, like I said, when I turn around, you'll see what I mean by it looks kind of like a box hair. Well, for one thing, the bangs are sticking straight out. Um, I am not a bang girl. Um, however, the model that she looks like she's all of about 16 years old, looks adorable in this, but um, she, she doesn't really have the bang either in the very front of the wig. This is not, you know, a lace front. So if you were to comb this away, you would wanna probably pull out your own hair a little bit. So let me show you the back because I actually really like this, but you will see what I mean by kind of the little bit of a box hair. You know, it kinda of needs to regain its original kind of shape, shaping back there. Same with here, it's kinda of sticking out just a little bit. I think a good wash, I think if I wash this it would help with the shine and it might kind of, you know, go back to its original shape. But this is the, the right side. And the left side, kind of did that weird, showed you the back first. Um, but do you see kind of the potential with this? I mean, I think it's a fun, cute, style and this gorgeous, gorgeous uh, double monofilament top. I've never had one of those. Um, and I don't know, I think it looks really, really realistic. And if you do wear wig grips, cause you know that's one of my gripes with the grips, is that you can see them through those hand knotted um, monofilament tops. Well, this one, you cannot see your wig grip under here because it's a double, monofilament top, so um, you're not gonna see your wig grip under there. So that's kind of nice if you are a wig grip wearer. So this one I would dry shampoo to help give me, take away this really um, unrealistic softness that's in here. Um, plus it will help me to, um, I'm not figuring out, like wow, I don't understand the bang situation in this one. Like. Uh, where, yeah, hmm. Um, but uh, yes, very unrealistic um, texture. So that dry shampoo will help that. It'll help the shine and it will help keep the hair a little bit where I kind of want it to go. Um, this cap does have some permatease. I don't think I remember to tell you that when I was showing you the cap, but there's permatease right here in the crown. Um, Noriko likes to do that, and I, for one, love her for that because I like to have some lift in my crown, and 
therefore I do not have a problem with that at all. Okay, well obviously we've had a, a bit of a costume change here. It is actually a different day. So I'm going to continue on making this wig chat with our gal here. Um, I, feel, I started filming that very late at night. I was wanting to get that done. And I was so frustrated with the bangs in this gal. I have learned a lesson. I do not like bangs on my wigs at all. And I've kind of always known that, but I thought this looked adorable and it even showed kind of the the bangs over to the side. So it, it didn't give me an indication by just looking at the manufacturer's photos really that there were many bangs in there at all. I figured obviously that there was these, even the description, it was like long, razored, wispy, so when this came with those bangs that you saw that were just like ding, 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 you know, across, it really did throw me for a loop. Um, had a really hard time trying to get them to work for me. But this, I don't know what this wants to do and it doesn't know what it wants to do. And then I've got long wispies, and so I will go through this and definitely uh, cut the long ones that don't have rhyme or reason while they're, why they are there. And, uh, cause until you do that, you really can't do really much of anything. Um, and I think that's, to be honest, when you when you have stuff like this and it's like, there's no reason for it. I, I'm a hairstylist. I understand cutting and, and I'm not uh, going to claim to be some kind of expert or anything, but honestly, I don't think you have to be a hairstylist to understand stuff like this. But I think that's, I must, I don't know. Yeah, I just think that shouldn't happen. It's like if you're going to have a, a wig with a bang, then my goodness, let's commit to cutting that bang in. Even if it's a little bang, let's just at least make that little bang make sense. Anyway, yeah, you can work with the sprays, um, tuck this behind the ear and just make sure this is taking advantage of that gorgeous shape, you know, that it has right through here. Um, You can, you know, still give it lift. You know, I think that's key with wigs. I think that we need to have, no matter if it's a, a wavy wig or curly um, or whatever, I think it's, you. I just think it needs to sit up off that wig cap a little bit. Um, I think it looks less wiggy. I think to have the movement is important. And then in movement, I mean, um, not have it to where it's completely, you know, kind of smashed against the head. It's like, I don't know, that's just not my style, I guess. I think wigs need to be freed up. I think those fibers need to stand, stand up and off the cap. And to me, that gives a little bit more of a realistic feel and look to to it and it doesn't matter for me which kind of style it is and what kind of fiber it is and the haircut I like to make sure those fibers are just standing up and away from the cap all along the hairline and everything so yeah see the and I'm playing with it now and those little these little bangs are starting to show themselves but again um, they would stay, they would stay away if I stopped playing with it. Um, put a little of the Peace Out cream on there, it'll weigh those fibers down. But again, if you continue to play with them, those fibers are going to just, you know, come right off and go away. Hey guys, so I wanted to take Clarissa outside here. When I was editing this video, I noticed, man, I, the color was just not, um, 
representing itself like it actually is. It is not sunny here today, but it is overcast and it's natural light. So I'm hoping that you'll get a better feel to this color. Um, so remember this color is called um, chiffon candy, I think. I wanted to take it outside though, just to see if maybe it would show more true because it definitely came off very almost uh, in a red shade when I was editing it. Very, very brassy and more toward that tone. And while it's definitely not an ashy brown or an ashy dark blonde by any means, it's definitely warm and there are some brassy colors in here. It was just really, really inaccurate. So I'm hoping if you actually see this, at least we'll know that it seems to be a little bit better, but I'm not gonna delete the scene that I um, was talking in the house about this wig, but at least now you can see it in a different light, in a more natural light. So yeah, so this is Clarissa. Um, as you can see, I have, you know, brought a little bit of the bang down. She's starting to behave a little better now as, um, <laughs> as it's been out of the box and on my head of, for a little bit. Could not deal with those bangs before, as mentioned. So, yeah, I think they're, they're easier to, to deal with now. Definitely a lot of product in here, though. <laughs> so, let me change hands. Um, it's... I think it's cute. I think it's going to be another really kind of cute kind of summer choice, I think. Um, when it's starting to get a little warm out, it's always nice to, to have uh, a, some choices, you know, for the warmer months. And I think this one will fit the bill pretty well. Um, it's not super edgy. It's more of a traditional style, but that's okay. Um, sometimes I just feel like kind of, you know, putting something on that's uh, doesn't take a whole lot of fussing with. And anyway, okay guys, so yes, this is Clarissa. I have, you know, pulled my own hair out of this perimeter. So you can see there that um, it is definitely, it would be a hard one to figure out, you know, if it's a wig or not, I think. Um, so I do love that option with these non-lace front wigs, you guys. I love to be able to have that option. And um, just please, you know, if you're new to all this, don't be afraid of those. Don't be afraid of the non-lace front, front wigs because I think they are fabulous. Okay, I'm gonna take it back inside now. But, um, yeah, so this is kind of indoor light. I'm hoping it will not pick up those brassy tones so, so much, um, just to kind of, again, kind of give you an idea in a little bit different light. Kind of more by my front door area. So, alrighty then. That is going to be it for now, guys. Thank you so much for hanging in there on this one. And um, I hope at least you got a kind of a sense of this Clarissa uh, in chiffon candy. Bye-bye.